Okay, W208, 210, uh, 203, 202, it's all basically the same. I've done one before on the W202, but this is slightly different on the 208. Um, actually, barely, barely different. I think the only difference is going to be the carpet liner in the trunk. Um, <clears throat> and it's 99% the same. But I'll do it anyway. Um, I remove the carpet liner first. You're going to pop the little, there's two little push pins, one here beside the, the lights where you, uh, the top one there where the tail lights are on the inside and then one up in front of the uh, the, the trunk hinge uh, pop those two out they're the two little thingies that you pop the center up out of and slide them out and they lock by pushing the pin in uh, pull those out and then pull the carpet down on both sides and we're going to do the both sides at the same time Got both sides pulled out and then you're going to see in there, you will see the two 17 millimeters. I've taken these ones off on this one. You'll see two 17 millimeter nuts. The bottom one and then the top lock nut. I'll show you that other side because they're not off. See the two 17 millimeter nuts on there. Then there's a washer and a rubber grommet, and that's basically it. Hold the bottom 17 millimeter nut with a open end 17 millimeter wrench. And while you're shaking the top one off with a 17 mil socket. You may or may not need the wrench to be held on the bottom, but probably you will. I won't be able to do this with one hand while holding this carpet open. But uh, anyway, um, before you even jack up the car, take those off and I uh, will back. Okay, that's all of 30 seconds to take those two off. And the top washer and the top grommet will, I don't know if you can pull this out before the shock pulls down. Usually not. Anyway, we can't. <clears throat> so now we're going to jack up the car and that will pull the both two shocks up to the top, so back to back to this in a second. Okay, so we jack the car up, uh, both wheels off the ground, and uh, the jacking pads at the sides of the car are under jack stands. And now we have to remove the lower suspension arm cover. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. I think there's one on each side. Did you is there? Yes, there is. There's one on each side at the back of the uh, the lower control arm. So, I'm gonna unbolt those on both sides. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, after removing the two 10 millimeter retainer bolts, there's little tabs on the front and rear side, and you just un kind of unclip those and pull down. And that's just kind of like a splash guard on the <clears throat> excuse me lower control arm. And now you can get to the 17. I think these are 17. I don't remember what size they are. I think these are 15s. Um, the lower con uh, shock bolts right here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Where did my little headlight go out? <laughs> anyway, uh, back in one minute when uh, I gotta hose these down with some lube too. Obviously these are the originals and they're gonna be sticky. Back in a second. Okay, the rear lower bolts are 16s. So hold on to the front and turn off with the rear. And like I said, since these have been on for 15 years, they're gonna want some lube. Oh man. <laughs> Did I get people bitching at me and saying that uh, you're replacing all these parts on a car, blah blah blah, and replacing shock absorbers. I, I, these are the stock shock absorbers. Uh, I did the stop, stock upper control arms and ball, lower ball joints uh, the other day. The factory ones at 230,000 kilometers. And I defy you to show me a Honda or a Toyota or a Nissan or anything else for that matter whose suspension is still working at 230,000 kilometers and barely needs to be replaced. I'm doing it as a matter of principle. I just do it whenever I get another car. So I'm just going to keep hosing this down and taking this off because I don't want to destroy this bolt back in a minute. Okay, we got the lower bolt out and uh, now we're just going to pull the shock down and out. And I'm going to grab it, pull down, and then pull the top bottom. Actually, depending on the car, they all come out differently. This one's going to want to push from the top, I think. Oh, that 
inch step. That one is sticky to come out. Okay. Try and pull up then. God. <laughs> Wow, is that shock? You see, these shocks felt soft to me. This shock is stiff as crap. There's nothing else holding this from coming out. Except it's the stiffness of the shock pushing up on itself. They said to me it felt a little soft, so I went and grabbed some new Monroes. I chose the Monroes over the KYBs because I don't particularly like the hard ride. The KYBs ride a little harder in my opinion, but that's just an opinion. Holy cow. This sucker does not want to come off. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, apparently the top part of the shock was just sticking and it's bushing up there where the bushing goes through. Is the new. Let's take the cap, the dust boot off. Oh, it doesn't want to come off past it. That's what was stuck on this. You can see the, the bushing there. That's what was stuck on this one. So let's just test them for stiffness. This one is still pretty good, <laughs> amazingly enough, and I cannot even compress this one. I don't 190 pounds, I was leaning on that, and I can barely compress this. So, yeah, that was a, uh, you said the rear end, right, rear ride was just a little mushy, but this, this shock looks actually okay. Um, it's not dripping or anything, it's not leaking, and it is still compresses and rebounds really well for a 230,000 kilometer shock that's not bad at all but uh, I'm putting the Monroe's on and uh, back in one second okay so we pushed the new shock through from the bottom and uh, popped it through and I've just put oh, can you even see that sorry the lights crap in here give me a few You can see I've just put one nut on there to hold it because it's uh, I'm not going to be tightening that. I just don't want it to fall back through the hole. So just put one nut on there, and then we're going to come down to the bottom and pop the shock in. And I'm running out of battery. And I'm running out of memory card. <laughs> and it's a freaking migraine too. So it's a lovely day for me. How's yours doing? Oh, okay. Now this stiff bugger is going to be fun to put in, so we're going to have to leverage it over the lower control arm. But to do, how am I going to leverage this sucker over? <sighs> bum, bum, bum. What would be the easiest way to leverage this bastard over? I can't get in here and lever, can I? Maybe. Trust me, this thing is as stiff as hell. And if I could get some more downward travel on the suspension, which I cannot. I've got the car jacked up as far as I can. So hold on, I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna find some way to just all I have to do is lever this over. Can you see that? Just lever this over the edge and then it will be stuck in there and we'll be good. Um find some way to do that. Back in one second. Okay, I actually just used the lower bolt uh, here on the inner control arm to lever the shock up to there. And I'm just going to pop it sideways over, hopefully. 
It will pop right into. Don't you dare fall off of there because I will kill you if you do. I will kill you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh no, it went in sideways. Now I have to pull it up. <laughs> oh, this is just. This is one of those days I'm just not having a great day. <laughs> I'll be back in one minute. I gotta lever it back up again. Back in a second. Okay, that camera does that one more time. <laughs> i tell you, it's a horrible day. Oh, fuck. Anyway. Uh, to get... I pried from the back. Wow, this is really bad to film. I pried from the back and pried the shock up. Very simply. Um, that's lube. Yeah, that sounds good too, doesn't it? <laughs> so now I got it up and just turned the base of the shock to line up the bolt. And... Now we're going to line that up through the hole, front to back, and then just replace the bolt, and I'll put the torque spec on the bottom of the video. There is my bolt. No, screwdriver, you can't stay in there. because I don't have a hammer under here and it's been as I've said one of those days that I don't just am not feeling like doing sweet bugger all but I wanted to do this don't know why now that I see that the shocks weren't actually bad <laughs> they felt soft they really did they felt softer than I thought they should anyway that's not to say that they were actually soft so uh yeah, other than this, and then tightening up the two bolts at top, tighten up the top 17, and then you tighten up the lock nut on top of that. Put everything back together, and you're done. I'll uh, list the torque specs on this uh, on the bottom of the video, or up here or somewhere. Who knows? Thanks for watching.